So it's hash brown morning again, and I'm having mine all um, grated up. And James is um, having his sliced up because he prefers it sliced I up. I do prefer it. Though. And it's just as easy for me to make it one way or the other. So I made mine one way and made his the other. And we're having guacamole and oranges and lychee nuts for dessert because I don't know how those lychee nuts are going to be. And t tomatoes with the... Yeah, because we have lots of tomatoes that it's... we bought a bunch and then we had a bunch <coughs> given to us. So we yeah. have a lot of tomatoes. And pretty soon, and pretty soon have yeah, them we'll have them. Got uh -huh. a few from your uh, garden already. Yeah. Mine tomatoes are behind, but that's the way it goes. Mmm, you're going to be reviewing that finally. You finished well, it then. I haven't finished with it, but I have finished up one thing. So do you want me to start? Yes, you go ahead. So uh, this is uh, called The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. So I'm reading uh, I'm reading three things about how we're by Sylvia Plath. So that's The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. This is the original. And then I'm reading uh, something by Ann Stevenson. Is, uh, poet. I've read, I think, some of her stuff, but I don't know if she's a real poet or one of the, the fake that uh, write or wrote short prose. And, you know, like, classic is William Carlos Williams, you know. He just wrote short prose, really prosaic stuff, too, you know, like, uh, per unit Syllable? Writing. Whatever. Syllable. James Joyce, uh, writing prose was way more poetic than William Carlos Williams. And not striving to be poetic. I don't mean like, oh, poetic, like uh, artsy, shartsy kind of stuff. But uh, William Carlos Williams is strutting around this world. And I hope he wasn't a fake doctor. Like so many GPs. Uh, yeah. He might have been both, big yeah, poet and big doctor. It's hard to say. But uh, so uh, it's a biography, kind of a literary biography of Sylvia Plath. And when it comes to writers, that's about the only thing I'm interested in. You know, like I'm not really overly interested in the, all the scandal and stuff like that unless it has something to do with the writing. And of course, there there's all sorts of melodrama in Sylvia Plath's life. She committed suicide right after publishing this novel, The Bell Jar, anonymously. It was back in 1963. Mm -hmm. So uh, she would have been somewhere around, I think she was born in 32, so she would have been in her very early 30s, maybe 31. Anyway, I haven't actually finished this, you know, truth in advertising, so, you know, if, uh, all you little trolls out there, you know, like, uh, you know, like, I, I'm not going to give you some ammunition, how far have I got in this, oh, I'm uh, about a sixth of the, no, what is it, uh, fifth of the way through, a little more than fifth of the way through. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm 50 pages through this, so I'm just slaving my way through it, but here's what I actually got through. The weird thing is I got through the Norwegian translation before I got through the English original. So it's something like, I hope uh, you Norwegian folks uh, will excuse my mispronunciation. Glass clocking? N means the. Isn't that weird? They put the the. Well, they probably think it's weird that we put the the before. But E-N means the. If I'm not mistaken in Norwegian. So I'm teaching myself Norwegian by um, reading an English original in translated into the Norwegian. So, uh, uh, glass clock. And I got through it the other day. And, uh, but, you know, like, uh, it's, 
I'm teaching myself more and more about the vocabulary. I got through it. I got much, if not most, of the basic uh, grammar down. Did you and want some guacamole? I did lick my finger around the sure, edge. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's about 200 pages in the Norwegian thing, and I'm, I'm halfway through. No, yeah, okay, troll, you know, like, control yourselves, you know, like, uh, like don't uh, wet yourselves uh, with uh, eager glee or anything like that. So I've got through it, but uh, I've gone through it once, uh, all the way through. But uh, what I what I'm doing is well, I'll show you. Okay, camera person, get ready. I'm you, just joking. You want me to? No, 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 no. I'm just joking. Get set for a, a close up. But you see, well, I'm gonna do a step closer. To yeah, you just do that. <laughs> uh, so I don't have to. No, go no, no. I wasn't talking to you. I was pretending that we had a camera person. So here's what I here's uh, what I've gone through once. Oh, there, that's. But here's uh, what I, how I go through the stuff when I'm learning or teaching myself a language, just by using a bilingual saves a lot of time in terms mm. of uh, looking stuff up in the dictionary. But a requirement for myself, I kind of laugh when I get hold of secondhand books in languages other than English in uh, the English context that we live in here. I'll find that people have started, it's like a New Year's resolution. They're going through the book and they, uh, they put in, they've looked up the occasional word and they get through 10 pages. Some people are a little bit more, um, have a little bit more stick to intuitiveness and they'll get through like maybe 50 pages. And it's usually 10 pages. I don't know how long that is, like 10 days. It's how long does a New Year's resolution last? A week and a half? week? Whatever. But you'll see what I try to require of myself is to go through and write down, and I'm trying to do it fast, every word. So it, when I go through this process, I'll read it in the original. Or not the original, here's the translation into Norwegian. Then I'll go through and try to write down every word. Boom, 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 boom. Then I get out the bilingual, the bell jar, and I'll go through that again, trying to fill in it all. Every so occasionally, uh, there will be an idiomatic translation, and there won't be a word-for-word -word correspondence, but that's just part of the learning process. You learn idioms and stuff like that. And then I'll go through it uh, again after I've filled it all out, but I'm just trying to read it without the... the it's just a hint, right? I'll, I'll look at what I've written in there, but I'll try to read it in Norwegian. So, I'll go through it four times, and then I'll be going through the English once. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I've actually gone through... I was saying I've gone through 50, through 50 pages, but I've actually gone through over 100 pages using this uh, process. So, uh, you see, you, you trolls out there, you wet yourselves. Uh, prematurely, I right? got too, too excited. So yeah, you know, like I'm thorough, 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 thorough. When I don't go through something, it's just because something's had to go back to the library. But if I've got the, uh, if I've got a hold of oh, something, oh, but you don't do that to library books. I don't books. do it to library no, no. books. This is my own. Book. Uh, I would have got it used. Very used. Yes. No, it looks kind of old-fashioned, but clear. the binding is wonderful. If you can ever get a hold of this, uh, don't pay uh, money. It was published in 1986, but my heavens, you know, like it's... Uh, uh, the binding is wonderful. Whoever published this in, in Norway, it's 1986. It's not as old as it might look. Uh, the Norse Book Club, it looks like. The Norska Book Club. Uh, excuse me uh, for the mispronunciation if you're tuning in from Norway. I'm trying. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying. So, ultimately, uh, see, like this is a much newer edition. I think it's from 2005. Well, 1963 is when it was published originally, as I was saying. I guess I got that right. 2005. And it's falling apart. Now, I've been... <laughs> You know, I go through this stuff pretty intensely. I haven't marked it up, really, but uh, there's no need to. What I have to mark up is the Norwegian stuff. But, um, so I, I'm able to do this with uh, languages that uh, share a 
significant vocabulary with English, like French, Portuguese, Spanish, Italian. I haven't got a hold of any Romanian, uh, but uh, I'll be able to do that with Romanian. Uh, what is it from? Uh, from is it Ro Romance or something like that? Uh, from Italy, Reto Romance. I'll be able to do it with that. I don't have any uh, stuff, but as soon as I can relatively safely get on the internet, we don't have it at home. I have to go to the university, or Pauline could go to the library, something like that. I can't do that because my immune system's um, challenged, shall we say. I've got lots of comorbidities when it comes to the various variants of uh, COVID, and the original COVID, too. So, uh... I probably yeah. shouldn't be going to the library either. I just... I've... Well, when you've I, got when both been, your shots. I do. And, and you're very careful. You I wear back, the mask you, and, and I wear, take clothes off when I come yeah, back. Yeah, and you have a bath. Usually yeah. if you can't, then... Then I use the wet wipes yeah, to wipe everything off. Yeah, exactly. Right. Off. So, yeah. yeah, if people were as careful as you, the thing, you wouldn't even have to do the Australian... We wouldn't even have to do the Australian thing here. But, um, yeah, people just aren't careful. At any rate, so uh, what will happen when I eventually get through this all, this will take me about a hundred hours, which doesn't seem like that much, but that's more than a one course. And the significant thing, that's reading. You see, like, there are four different components to learning a language, uh, or just knowing a language. Uh, there's reading, writing, speaking, and hearing. And I'm only concentrating on the one course. It's the easiest part, right? I don't want to get all melodramatic about uh, what I'm doing here but uh, what that is you see is the equivalent of four courses in writing just in doing this uh, 200 uh, page book four courses in writing and it's uh, literary stuff I don't want to overstate what's what's happening because this isn't quite the same thing as reading something like in the original Sigrid Unset you know I've, I've got something uh, by her, and I, I want to get hold of the original, hopefully in the library. Uh, not, not the original, but the translation into English. That's a bit tougher because you're dealing with idioms. Usually, when you're dealing with a translation from English, it's easier than if you're going the other way because they, they end up having to stick to the original or trying to stick to the original, whatever. So uh, it's well. Maybe you just have to take my word for it. It's, it's easy. So again, I don't want to overstate what I, I'm doing here. But the key thing is, along with whatever, uh, like, uh, like reading it uh, through, it's actually more than one course. Like it's a, the process that I go through, with going through it four times, that's the equivalent. It takes me about half an hour to get through a page doing it the four different times. But I actually, what I do is I read it in a preliminary fashion. That's why I'm reviewing it. I've done it already. And then I'll read it in, uh, once I finish it all. It takes me about three minutes to go through, which is about uh, a third of the speed that it takes me to go through. I'm pretty well average reader. It takes me about a minute to look through a page in English, a page of this size. But when I'm going through the Norwegian, it's about three minutes. So ultimately, it'll be something like 120 hours or stuff it like that. It so probably takes you longer than that, though, because mm -hmm. I keep interrupting you. Well, I do put down, reading. when I, I actually keep uh, time myself to see if I can speed up the process. Yeah. And uh, I'll say interrupt. I don't say who interrupted me. <laughs> see, like the it's always me. Not always. Uh, sometimes that well. The, oh, the they dogs might need sometimes outside. Sometimes have to go outside. Yeah. You know, or okay. Whatever. And then sometimes I'll forget to go back. That's rare because it, this is a pretty exciting story. It's it's uh, tragically. Oh well, it's uh, ultimately tragic. She survived. Uh, you know, this is a spoiler alert. She tries to commit suicide. Actually, several different times. The, her biographer says she committed suicide and she did, uh, she'd made an attempt earlier, but she made many. Well, you know. she seemed like um, an interesting person from what you were telling me about. Well, yeah, she, well, almost like, like too interesting. Yeah, it seemed like, like she, she really wanted to have wanted, all sorts of experiences mm -hmm. to write about when she's and young. And she, like she wanted 19, to uh, 
be world class, really. Like well, no, like a, even a world class housekeeper and a child, all sorts of things. And, so uh, it's wife interesting and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Now, you find, you know different uh, bipolar people have different cycles. Yeah. And uh, she she seemed to be very volatile, up and down and up and down. Some people, you know, they get really really high and then they'll crash. Well, it seemed and like last for months. She or was even with her crazy um, bouts or whatever, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call them. Or mm-hmm. it seems like she was more sane than the doctor that she hooked up with there because, um, well. He was dangerous for other people, right? Like he, he, the, you were telling me about the one ski trip and stuff like that. Yeah, he was uh, pre-med, I'd say. So he's called uh, Buddy Willard in this. What was his name? Dick Norton or something like that in real life. And, uh, you know, his middle initial is S. So sometimes he signed B.S. Willard. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, that's the character in the novel. That's kind of a non-realistic touch. I don't think anyone who knew anything would ever do that. Yeah. But um, it's kind of like a comic novel, for half. Anyway, uh, she uh, uh, after she visits him, I think for the first time, that would be the first time when he went into a TV san- sanitarium. And I guess it happened in real life to this Dick Norton or whatever. He'd been kind of like very athletic, and she says she, in novels, it might have been something like that in real life. Been admiring him from afar for five years. I think it might have been more because I think some sort of a neighbor, the Dick Norton. So he's a handsome guy, good looking or something like that. Well, there was a rest here for the TV. She turns up, expecting to see someone you know, all haggard and thin. He's fat, right? mm. stuffing him with food and making him sit. So, so she's she'd already been disgusted by him. Now she's really disgusted by him. Mm. And the next day, he takes her out skiing. He can't ski himself. Mm. He's never taken any skiing. He's never done skiing. But he's seen people instruct other people. So, of course, he thinks he's an expert because here he is, you know, probably a eldest born son. He's a doctor, right? He could be. Well, she's an eldest born kid, not with a younger sister like you. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. So, there's, I guess, there's some problems with um, women who are only children. They end up. Well, she's not only child. A lot like a. Like a firstborn son yep. but um, when you're a, apparently when you're an eldest woman when there's only two siblings and the other one is a daughter a mm-hmm. younger, yeah. like a younger sister yep. then um, you end up more like me which is more like a middle son mm-hmm. which I think like I told James that this is probably because it may just be a societal thing or it might be a the um, the family structure maybe in a more patriarchal sort of system, um, which I think that's actually natural. I think um, men are bigger; they tend to be bigger, so they're going to set the rules for the family. On average, I mean, right? We're not saying it's uh, that's the way it should be. But that's I think the way it's, it's been the way it is. I think. I actually believe that is the way it should be. And it's not... I, I don't necessarily like it, but I um, I can understand why it should be that way, because men are bigger. They are stronger, and their will is going to be enforced. Now, if they're um, more gentle and stuff, well, that's good, <laughs> because it won't be enforced or else, right? Which is not 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 a good environment for um, any family, any children to be raised in. So, uh, but anyway, I just what I was James was telling me about this whole um, uh, what was that book? Born to Rebel. Born to Rebel. Everyone should read it. It should be. Anyway, it should really be called Born to Descent. 
Yeah. The uh, youngest boys tend to be rebellious and violent, uh, almost more violent actually than oldest boys. Yeah, but when James was telling me about all this, he often, when he's reading a book, it's like I'm reading a book because I'm hearing all about this interesting stuff. So, which I don't know if I do that to you. Do I? I probably do, hey? I do. Okay, so when I'm reading a book, he's reading it too. But anyway, so he's reading and then he's telling me and then he's reading and then he's so. So anyway, which is great because I get to learn. So I'm thrilled about that. I've learned about Sylvia Plath now. Terrific, because I probably wouldn't have bothered to read that on my own. I don't know, right? But anyway, so when he was telling me about the Born to Rebel and this and that and whatever, I said, well, that would be, like with the females, I said that would be because the mother is like an eldest sibling in the family. So they kind of take the, for women, they become the eldest sibling. For men, this is not that way. There's They have the father, but they're... Um, the oldest son. The oldest son, is right? The, the big boss guy. Yeah, they're um, more full position than the mother, really. So one guy I know was saying that uh, he, was, he went to Harvard mm -hmm. for a while. Then he said the money ran out and then we went to the University of Trump, which isn't that bad either. Mm -hmm. But some prof, one of his classes at Harvard, asked, how many of you are first born? Almost every person put their hand up first yeah. born. Well, that's, and that's a problem. It is a problem. That's why um, our society is in trouble right now, honestly. Because we encourage, um, well, we look at people as like, oh, well, if you're doing this when you're young, imagine what you're going to do when you're 45. Well, that mm -hmm. doesn't work out that way. And we know it Not doesn't work oldest. out that way. We have a lot of evidence to show that it doesn't. So um, it would make more sense to look at people what they're doing at age 45 or whatever and not look at not judge a person by what they did when they were 20 and then extrapolate from there and go oh you know he's going to be amazing like superman or something he's not 45 50 Probably that's uh, theoretically when a person hits their mental peak and i think if a person avoids smoking and over drinking and <clears throat> eats well that's an average it would be even after 50 that's been my experience. Some of the stuff I'm proudest of doing has happened in my 60s. You know, like, actually, uh, pretty well once I hit uh, pensioner age, not retirement age. I took early retirement. So, uh, the person who wrote that book says that for a younger son, there is flexible in the mind as an oldest child but with the younger son it's age 80 an oldest child oldest son 25 their brain is as flexible and that's been my experience I'm the second oldest and I just keep learning and learning Norwegian teaching it to myself I don't have some don't need someone to teach it to me either. And I think one <coughs> one reason why I find <coughs> learning stuff <coughs> so easy is because I, I'm not sitting there. I'm not, I'm like a kid. Yeah. And kids just learn. It's not like I can't stand reading this. I'm thinking about. Well, I want to be. You know, like I just sit down and put my nose to the grindstone and exercise a little bit of elbow grease. But it ain't that hard. You just put in the time, you know. So uh, Sylvia Plath was an oldest child, and she didn't have a younger sister. And she sits down. She's going to lead, learn stenography, and she doesn't. You know, she's she's age twenty or stuff like that. She keeps telling herself she comes from a German background, both sides of the family. I've got to learn German, but she can never get uh, higher than B's in it. You know, 
so even then she's uh, and she she was amazing because she was omnicompetent like uh, so many manic depressives or bipolar people I don't know if it's uh, politically incorrect to say manic depressive you know like that's what it is it's manic and then it's depressive bipolar what the hey is that you see <laughs> it's yeah. a euphemism oh you know like it's just going back from one pole to another but we'll avoid the, those horrible words manic and depressive you know especially I don't know which is worse. <laughs> That's what happens. First thing is depressed. And then, like Sylvia Plath, try to kill themselves, eventually succeed. You know, like it's depressive. Come on. But bipolar, okay. But uh, what comes with uh, hypomania is omnicompetence. What happens with uh, uh, some people? I mean, amazing creativity. Uh, Pete Townsend or something like that. He's. Uh, uh, what shall I say? Volunteered. It's not so much admitted, because it's it's in his autobiography, behind pale blue eyes. Is that what it's called? Uh, he just uh, he volunteers. He was uh, was not as though someone grew. Hey, are you manic depressive? Are you bipolar? You know, like. Uh, but I, I guess he handles it with lithium or something like that. And so he's not having these huge crashes. So the the best album or the best selling album, one of the better ones. Uh, who's next? It was a huge, big project. Supposed to be Lifehouse. I haven't heard it. Apparently, he, he finished it up finally. It was like 30 years later or something like that. But, uh, you know, he just crashed when he was trying to put it together. One of those uh, depressive crashes. But, yeah, so what happened with, with uh, Sylvia Plath when she was skiing? So, Buddy gets her out there on the ski slopes. And he gets her on the... Uh, the junior thing, you know, and spends a half an hour running, you know, like she's, uh, what do you call it, fish ribbing up and stuff like that, I can't remember what it's called, and after a half hour he says, okay, you get on the, uh, on the ski lift, she said, wow, well, I can't go to the top, he says, he says stop halfway up. So yeah, she because she the, says she doesn't even know how to slalom. I mean, she doesn't but, know how to so, slalom. So, so she, she can't slow down, that. right? Yeah, yeah. So she knows, yeah, yeah. wait a minute, I'm going to be going pretty fast if I don't know how to slow yeah, down. Yeah, exactly right. So he says, stop halfway up. So she gets on the ski lift, and it's a different sort of thing than what we think of ski lifts. Anyway, there's a person in front of her, a person behind her. She's at, When she gets about halfway up, she's a, I can't stop this process, you know, like... Uh, she doesn't want to cause a fuss, so she goes all the way to the top. She gets up there, and idiot is waving, you know, like giving her directions, you know, like uh, season opening, you know. Okay, come down now, you know. And someone all of a sudden cuts in from the right, uh, from her left, and from her right, and uh, I'm doing it from your your direction, so all your little trolls don't wet yourselves. Uh, thinking of uh, so from her point of view, from her left, and from her right. And uh, that's from my point of view. And it closes up. She decides, she thinks, I can just take the skis off and slink down the side so, so no one can see. I would just, you know, like I would just admit defeat, you know what I'm saying? And say, hey, you know, like uh, there's another day and another day. I want to make sure that I survive till there's another day. Mm -hmm. But she decides she's going to come right on down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And she comes on down, she says that her, her, you know, her, the air slugs her in the mouth and her, her hair is just horizontal. <laughs> it's awful. You know, like she could have killed someone. But she talks about how it's kind of like maybe she could die. She's even suicidal there. You see yeah. what I'm saying? But she could have taken some.